So over the last year, I had been making the switch from Final Cut to DaVinci, and really over the last three months, I've kind of gone more cold turkey. There's one project that I had already started in Final Cut that I'm kind of finishing up because I just didn't want to move everything over. But other than that, I've been editing in DaVinci completely for probably the last three months. And I absolutely love it. I cannot believe I waited this long. So I kind of wanted to go through my color grading process for C-Log2 in DaVinci Resolve and kind of what I found works for me. It might work for you. You guys know I shoot on C70 and Canon R6. This is gonna kind of be a C70 focus video. So I'm gonna be using the short film that I uploaded this week, The Storm, that footage to kind of go over my power grades and how I've been attacking this C-Log2 footage. DaVinci is so powerful in terms of what you can do from masking and auto tracking and all the things that it is capable of just within this color panel alone is fantastic. I really do like editing in it. I think the normal timeline editing stuff is very similar to Final Cut. I don't really miss the magnetic timeline at all. It's one thing I always worked around as opposed to using. A lot of people like it, it's cool if you do. It was just never for me, so not having the magnetic timeline has been really nice. And man, the audio workflow in DaVinci is next level. It is top tier. It is probably the biggest improvement to me from Final Cut. There is essentially a full-fledged doll in this program. It's fantastic, all the things you can do in terms of sending stuff to buses, bus mixing, all the layers you can do. You have a full audio workspace at your fingertips, and it made sound design and stuff on this last video so much easier because I can use all of my VSTs and my plugins because I do a lot of audio work on the side. I can use all of those nice plugins that I've spent money on in DaVinci so much easier than I could in Final Cut. Most of the time when I try to use them in Final Cut, they would just crash or they would never actually work. In DaVinci, they actually work like they do when I'm editing in Logic Pro, so it's fantastic. That's been my biggest upgrade. I just kind of want to throw that in there. I'm probably gonna make a full video about that part in general, but I do today want to focus on the color grade and kind of what I've been doing in terms of power grades within DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna start with this clip here. It's one of the opening shots of the storm, the short film. And if you haven't checked that out, go check that out. I was kind of proud of it. It turned out really cool. It was something that I didn't really plan. It just kind of happened and it transformed and became something in the edit. So I had really a good time doing that. So if you're interested in that, check that out. Link is in the description. You could watch that. And I do have to shout out my friend Cody, who's helped me a lot. I learned a lot from him in terms of kind of how to set up your power grades, all that good stuff. So shout out to him for some of these tips and tricks that I've learned that hopefully will help you guys as well. So in terms of my project settings, let's jump in here real fast. This was in uh, 4096 by 2160, so 4K DCI. Um, which is what I shot in, and then I am in timeline color space is uh, Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, and the output color space is the same. So my power grade here is set up very simple. All my basic corrections, white balance, some light exposure stuff gets done here. Then I do some curve adjustments. Then I'll explain these parallel nodes here. These are all parallel, and then it goes out of those into some glow effects. This is like last minute adjustments if I wanna do that. And then my color space transforms. So this is where the LUT lives, the conversion LUT lives. And then this is any finishing LUTs. They live on the finish layer. And then sometimes I'll throw a vignette on the end just to kind of glue everything together. Don't always use that. I didn't use it here. I'm actually using some new film emulation that DaVinci has built in. That's on an adjustment layer that I'll show you later that I put over on top of everything else. We'll go over that in a minute, but I'm doing a vignette there, so I didn't really do it here, but that's also there just in case. I you know, want to use it for anything. So first, let's get this clip to Rec 709. So I'm gonna enable the color space transform, which has one of my C-Log2 LUTs on it. Specifically, it is the C-Log2 Soft Cinema. It's one of my favorite ones. I probably use it more than anything else. So now this is a great looking image. It looks nice. It just doesn't quite pop enough just in Rec 709. So let's make some adjustments here. So now I'm gonna enable the correct node that I did where I basically added some saturation to the highlights and kind of made the image just come alive a little bit, added some contrast. And basically what I did here is in the HDR panel here at the bottom, I'm adding some saturation in the highlights. And that is a great way to kind of selectively add saturation without affecting a crazy amount of the image. And what it's doing essentially is adding saturation to this, this sky right here where the sun's kind of popping out. And it kind of gives it a nice, warmer, more alive feel to it. And then on the normal primary color wheels, I don't think I'm doing a whole lot here. I added a little bit of contrast, not a whole lot going on on this. And I use this node primarily just for basic adjustments like correcting exposure. Sometimes it's more extreme when I missed exposure or I need something weird, you'll see that. But in this one, there wasn't a lot needed to be done. So that's all I did for that. And as you can see here, what I like to do is you can come down here and turn on editable splines. And this is a trick my friend Cody taught me. And basically what you're gonna do is just kind of 
compress the highlights just a little bit so drag this down and then, and then if you need to move exposure to compensate you can grab this right here and kind of adjust accordingly and then you could always if you needed more contrast you could do the same at the bottom and kind of create your basic s curve but i just didn't really need to do that with this situation because of what i end up doing later and then next are these parallel nodes okay and these are essentially things you probably don't really notice unless you were really pixel peeping but it will kind of all combine together to give you more of a clean image in your shadows and in your whites and your highlights so basically what i'm doing here on this one is i'm in the primary color wheels panel and all i'm doing on the gain here is going 0 0.9 0 0.9 on red 0.9 on green 0.9 on blue and then leaving the overall master gain at one and what that's doing is just kind of cleaning your whites up and making them more pure friend cody taught me that it actually is a great trick especially in more skin tone stuff you notice it a lot more in this shot it's not as noticeable you can kind of tell when i'm toggling it off and on you can kind of see it a little bit but it just makes the whites a little bit more pure and that's what's happening here and then the same with this black what i've labeled black here is when you go to color and you go to presets and if you go to chroma dark essentially what it's doing is just going to clean up your shadows it's going to clean up the dark it's going to kind of get rid of some saturation in your shadows and just give you an overall cleaner blacks and less noisy shadows so that's really what that's doing and then face here i'm not doing anything this is more for if you're going to do like a talking head like i'm doing right now and let's say you wanted to make the eyes pop a little bit more or you wanted to mess around with you know the beauty stuff and smooth out some skin tones you could use this here face track the whole thing and then make adjustments on that but this is just a power grade that i've already built and i just imported in so i'm just not using this one at all in this situation so now once we get past these parallel nodes this is where the fun stuff comes in and where i love davinci this glow effect is so nice and as you can see when i enable this what it's doing is essentially making this part of the image where the sun is kind of peeking under the clouds just pop and come alive a little bit and now with this effect a little bit goes a long way you can see here if you go to your inspector essentially it's an effect you just type in glow search glow drop it on this node and you can see that if you go crazy with the threshold you can make a really unnatural looking image but the key is for it you want it to be subtle so you can see here when i turn it off and on it's very subtle but it just kind of gives you a nice warm glow that is pleasing and again little things that make the whole image pop that's kind of what they're there for it's almost like a bloom effect on a film emulator but this is a little bit more controllable because you can really change the spread you can change you know the colors in the glow you can change the gamma saturation you can do all that kind of stuff there's a lot going on here in terms of blending modes and everything you can change so kind of do that as you see fit play around with it but i've been using it a lot and it's really cool and then lift this note is basically for if you were going to make some last minute adjustments right before you get to your color space transform this is when you would do that if you needed just to bring the shadows up a little bit or the highlights down just a little bit after you've made your other adjustments you could do that here didn't really do that on this one so it's unused at the moment and then now we get to our LUD again. So this is our color space transform. And then this is my finishing LUD. I believe on this one I used the blues baby. Um, and if you enable this, it's just kind of gluing things together a little bit. Now every clip in this film had this finishing LUD on it, but you probably could have thrown it on an adjustment layer and gotten the same results. I just did it here because sometimes, depending on the clip, I change the amount of intensity. Cause like what I'm doing with this one, if you come down here to your uh, key, you can just change your gain output here. And I have it at basically 50%. So now let's move to this adjustment layer where I've done some film emulation. It's just one node here because it's all I'm doing. Um, you enable this and you can see it's doing a lot to kind of add some punch to the image, add some warmth, and it's kind of gluing the whole project together. You'll see this when it's affected all the clips. It just kind of gives everything a similar look. It's the glue. Um, and essentially what DaVinci's done here in Resolve 19 is they've essentially added the answer just built into the program. And basically all I'm doing with this is I started with the 35 millimeter default look preset and then i've tweaked that so that's why it says custom but that's where i started and i've just made some adjustments so essentially what i'm doing is there's a little bit of bloom not a whole lot and then um i've lessened the grain that it stock puts on um, i just didn't want that much for this project so there's a little bit of grain happening but not a whole lot there's so many things you can do you can add a flicker you can add a film gate you can add you know vignettes you can add halation i am doing a vignette here you can see that's where my vignette for the whole project comes from um, so that's what I'm able to do there. It's cool that you can do this. I'm probably gonna start doing this more because it's just easier if I'm gonna use film emulation. It's nice to be able to do that. So these are kind of my settings for how I did this, but you could do whatever you wanted to do. Um, you can actually grade your whole clips with this from log if you really wanted to. I don't wanna really wanna do that. I like to use my conversion LUTs that I know work, um, but you could in theory pair this with any 
C-Log2 conversion LUTs or you could use them with no LUTs and basically film emulate the whole project. So now moving on to this clip, this is one of my favorites from the film. Let's turn on the color space transform, get the LUT on there. And as you can see, it's not doing a whole lot. It just kind of gets you to a workable color space. This is really what it looked like with my eyes. It wasn't really as vibrant as I'm gonna make it look. And that's the fun of color grading. You can really pull out the colors that are there, especially with this 12-bit Canon RAW codec, you can do a lot. And it was I was able to really get some pop out of it, as you can see with this correct, we'll enable this. And immediately there's more warmth added. And essentially what I'm doing here is the same thing I did on the last one. I'm saturating these highlights with the HDR tab. And then on the primary color wheels, I am bumping some highlights, dropping some shadows, and that's pretty much it there. And now moving on to the curve, enable this, and you can see there's just your basic S curve, adding some more contrast. I'm actually dropping the shadows more on this one than I was on the first clip I showed you. So this is kind of an example of that. And then with the whites, blacks, and then the face again, not being used, but those two are still doing what they're doing on the last clip, that never changes. And I will leave this power grade. You guys can download this for free if you wanna try it, I will leave it flat. I won't make any adjustments, but let you kind of use this node tree. Um, I'll drop it for free in the description, so go check that out if you're interested. Um, and then from here, we're gonna go to Glow. And again, the cool thing about Glow is it's so selective and you can really be subtle with it and add this nice warmth and pop. As you can see, it's making a big difference here without looking unrealistic. It's essentially just warming up the sunlight that's already there, accenting it, accentuating it, and making it pop a little bit more and giving you more of a finished look. So I really love this Glow effect. I think it's super useful especially when you know how to use it within reason, it really does make a difference. And then lift, I don't think I'm doing anything here again, nope. And then the finishing LUT, again, this is grain. Sometimes I add grain here, but because I'm doing film emulation, I'm not doing that. We can actually delete this. And then vignette, again, not much going on because I'm doing that with the film emulations. Then if we enable the film emulation, go back to this clip here, boom, and that's your finished look. I think it looks great. And again, this is a good foundation. If you like, you know, the colors that I'm pulling out of this, a lot of this comes from the base of a good conversion LUT. And that's kind of what I've done here with my LUTs. I'm really proud of this LUT pack. I think they're great. If you guys are interested, I have C-Log2, C-Log3 LUT packs and adjustment finishing layer LUTs as well that I've all used in my own work. Everything you guys have seen from me, I use my own stuff. It's not something that I don't use myself. I believe in it, I think it's great. So if you want something that'll take your Canon R5, R6, C70, any C-Log2, 3 camera footage and turn it into something that gets you kind of 85% of the way there with a look kind of added. I have eight different LUTs in these packs. I think they're great. Like I said, I use them all the time. Like as you can see here, the, the film emulation has been disabled. And if I just turn on this color space transform, this is a shot that just had more color in it naturally. You can see what it's doing. It's a really good looking image. And then from there, you can make your adjustments and add your pop. Obviously, I really believe in these LUTs. I use them in my own work and it is a great way for you guys to support the channel here. But these things I'm showing you will work with any Rec. 709 conversion LUT. You just may have to make different adjustments because they'll probably look different. So now let's jump to this clip that I've already enabled the LUT on. You can see here, dropping the correct tab. And basically what I'm doing here, again, saturating the highlights, not quite as much this time, but that's being done. Color wheels, same, same situation, adding a lot of highlights dropping a lot of shadows here just to get more contrast against every clip is different just depending on the lighting you might need to do more and then we've moved to curves here again a little less drastic on this one just a simple s curve not a lot going on here in terms of that as well you can see the enable disable same stuff enable all your whites your blacks don't really need that but it's there anyway and then glow once again just kind of accentuating where the sun is it's another simple way to get a pop out of your image I just love that. I just love that feature in DaVinci. I think it's sick. And then last but not least, this is one of my favorite shots of the film, and it was the hardest to color grade. So now let's enable the color space transform, and boom, you get this flat, not punchy at all, kind of lifeless image that I was just like, okay, how am I gonna make this work? Because the shot and the composition was really cool to me, and I just knew I had to make this work. But I wanted this to feel much cooler, uh, much leaning more towards blues, and less of this kind of green warm look I had here. I probably could have done a better job exposing in camera, changing the white bounce around or whatever, but that just did not happen on this one. So it is what it is. So when I enable this correct tab, you can see that I'm making exposure adjustments, but also white balance adjustments. So I'm, you know, minus 150 on the white balance, bumping a ton of highlights, dropping a bunch of shadows. I'm trying to pull some contrast out of this image because it was so flat to my eyes and in camera. It was just, you know, torrential downpour. You have this wall of water and it's just gonna look flat. So that's kind of what that was. HDR again, saturating some highlights, trying to get some life out of this thing. And then the curves, this is where I'm getting a little bit more lift out of the image. And you can see it's kind of, it's pretty noisy. It's pretty 
the image is breaking essentially because I kind of underexposed this in the moment. There was just no light to work with, so I was doing my best. And you get some life out of it now, but it almost still looks too flat. Like I was trying to figure out how to get contrast without underexposing. So I did my normal stuff here, glow to get a little bit more punch out of this. And you can change the white balance of the glow. So that was getting a little cooler once again, kind of leaning in this cool blue tone look. So I got to this point and the image was still not where I wanted to be at all. So I'm doing a lot on the lift node here where I didn't really touch this node at all in the other clip. So sometimes you just need to do more to make this feel cohesive. So if I enable this, you can see it's a very, very different image. And so what I'm doing is I'm kind of like desaturating it while also messing with the hue and adjusting the tint a lot here. So what I'm doing is I'm leaning plus 13 towards magenta because I just kind of wanted to get away from the green. It just looked too green and weird. And then I'm adding, mess with the hue a little bit. I'm like 39 on the hue. And then on the HDR wheels, I came in and just desaturated the shadows a little bit just to kind of clean it up. And that really got me much, much closer to what I wanted it to look like in my mind. And then if you come in, add the finishing LUT layer, it just kind of cools it up even more and gives you more of a cohesive look that kind of matches the rest of the film, has some tones, but also has the contrast of it being, you know, torrential downpour, thunderstorm to sunset. Like I wanted that contrast to be strong. So that's kind of what that is. Um, and then if you add the film emulation on top of that, you get your final look. And that was kind of the final look in the film. And yeah, it's noisy. It ain't perfect, but man, does it feel like something like to me this the grade on this feels mysterious it feels like what's lurking in the water like the, the storm is coming something's approaching it just kind of has a good feel and it added to the narrative and that was more important to me than a super clean pixel peep you know primo image like I was more focused on how does it feel and I think it really does contrast this shot this first shot and the next shot so nicely and I was really pleased with the gray because I wanted it to feel contrasted from this. So that's that. That's more of an extreme situation. Like I said, if you take, you know, this lift away, a lot's happening with that um, to get it where I wanted to get it. And I probably could have done some of this stuff on the earlier nodes. But sometimes when you're color grading, you just try stuff and then you end up at the same place. I just took a different route to get there this time. And that worked really well. And it just, you know, it, it really added a lot to the film. So I was glad. I got this. I spent the most time on this shot alone by far. It just took the longest. So that's how I color grade my C-Log2 footage in DaVinci. I think it's a good system. I'm sure there's probably some things I could be doing differently better, but this is kind of how I'm currently doing it and what I've learned so far after really, really diving in in the last like few months and from learning from other people like my friend Cody and different videos I've watched. This kind of seems to be where I've landed in terms of my everyday power grade that I kind of drop on every thing I shoot and then I just tweak it accordingly. So if you guys are interested in this, I will drop it for free on my Cellify store as a free download. So you can go check that out. And also you can check out my LUT packs there on the Cellify store as well. Also have some gear for sale up there too. If anybody's interested, you might catch a good deal on a lens or something like that. So go check that out. But I've really been enjoying DaVinci. I think it's by far the best program on the market right now. I think it's better than Premiere. I think it's better than Final Cut. It just is the most complete editor. And also let me know in the comments if you're interested in a audio workflow deep dive in DaVinci. I just think it's super powerful. So if you want to deep dive on that, let me know. I'd love to go through that and kind of show you guys how I like sound design because I love sound. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun thing for me to do. So I'd be glad to deep dive on that. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. But that's all I got for you today. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you stuck around to the end, I appreciate you. You're the real MVP. Thank you so much for watching this video. Go check out other videos on the channel. I have a lot of other tutorials, a lot of other camera stuff, but I also have a lot of creative projects that I'm passionate about. So if you're interested in that, check those out as well. It would mean the world to me. But as always, I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will catch you in the next one.